How's it going everyone? Today we'll be reviewing the Magic C M1 all-in-one VR headset, so let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the design. As you can see, it has some very sleek granite corners. The front is piano black, and although it has the usual black and white color scheme, it still looks very unique in its own way. Starting with the front, we see that when the headset is powered on, the Magic C logo lights up a nice white glow, a very nice detail. Moving on to the top, we find the I.O. ports. Here we have the micro USB charging and data transfer port, a mini HDMI input port, and a 3.5mm jack. We will get to those in just a bit. Next comes the main buttons. On the right we have the navigation buttons, and on the left we have the volume controls, power, and the Nibiru switch. I will talk about the end button in just a bit as well. These controls are also provided in the included Bluetooth remote. That has a very flat profile that can make it really hard to distinguish each button. If we look at the bottom, we also have an SD expansion slot. That is a maximum of 64GB. It would have been nice to have an option for 128 but 64 is just plenty. And since we're talking about spec, let's talk about what's under the hood. So it's rocking a quad-core Cortex-A17 rocket chip that's paired up with a Mali-T764 GPU. It's not the fastest nor the latest, but it gets by okay. It also comes with 2GB of RAM, 16GB of built-in storage, and a 4000mAh battery that gave me about 4 hours of movie watching time. Alright, back to what's on the outside. Moving on to the most important part of a VR headset, the visual quality and comfort level. Here we have a very soft but thick face pad that can be removed, washed, and readjusted. That is accompanied by a very comfortable velcro strap that is soft, wide, and has a fantastically large leather pad that very nicely hugs the back of your head. Just very well balanced and thought out. The nose room is exceptionally good as well, no issues there. And the headset weighs 507 grams, and you may think it's heavy, but really it's great since this is an all-in-one headset after all. If you don't think about it, and the comfort level doesn't get in the way of your experience, then it's good, is what I like to say. The simpler, the better. And this is what the headset has. A simple design, but very comfortable. Alright, so the lenses here are 45mm and provide a 90 degree field of view. Now remember, every manufacturer measures this differently, but here I would have to tell you that on my 5 inch screen model, it strikes a perfect balance before movie watching and immersion. And before we dive deeper, know that the updated version of this is released with a 5.5 inch display. And yes, both displays are IPS, and they both look good, but both models are great nonetheless. So the lenses here are pretty clear. One thing I like about the lenses here, although they become distorted around the edges, which is very normal on all lenses, I did not encounter any issues keeping the headset on even after a few hours of movie watching. Now that's saying something. And right here in between the lenses, we have a sensor that auto wakes up the display when mounted. And now we'll check out the software that runs everything. First, power on the headset and press and hold the power button until the logo comes up. 25 seconds later, it will finish booting up and you'll be presented to the home screen, or should I say, the Nibiru virtual room. That is divided into six sections. Let's start with the apps. This is where you'll find your regular apps that you can download manually. And although there is no Google Play or YouTube natively, I'll have a blog post showing you how to install apps such as Kodi, Moonlight, and more. Link will be in the description. I was able to install Minecraft that I do own and run it in the lowest settings. It was very smooth and was quite enjoyable. Also, if you're wondering where the end button is, if you press and hold it, you will be presented with a selection screen for option switches such as VR mode, virtual mouse mode, brightness, and much more depending on each app. You may also notice I don't have any 360 apps installed. That is because 95% of the apps on the market right now rely on the Google Cardboard API, which as you can see here, there is no way to set that up. But that is okay, it makes up for it with the strong attribute of running any app in side-by-side -side VR mode, which means you can play any game that has a control support in side-by-side -side VR. So again, I'll have a tutorial on my blog on how to install custom games like Real Racing 3, Minecraft, Kodi, and whatnot. Link will be in the description. Alright, if we exit out, next we have the theater. This is where you'll find some movies and videos to watch in virtual theater, limited to the selection that is in Chinese, which takes forever to load. So yeah. Next, we have the pano. This is where you'll find loads and loads of 360 videos to stream. They load pretty quickly, but the quality is not the best. Next up, we have the live section, where you'll basically find streams and recorded streams of Chinese streamers which is what I assume. Then we have something more practical. Photos. 360 photos. You can view regular photos, and you can review your 360 panos. And finally, inside tools, we'll find the settings, a fantastic 360 video player that can play regular flat videos in a theater, side-by-side -side videos, and 360 videos as well, all from your local storage. We next have the somewhat redundant app store that is limited to what you see here. We will get back to the HDMI in just a bit, and here we have the file explorer where you can browse your files, install APKs, and delete files. Very simple. And finally, there's the HDMI input feature, which I have to say, if you're a console user, you'll enjoy this quite a lot. Since what you can do here is plug in the headset as a second display with any other device that has an HDMI out. So essentially, you can run your Xbox, PlayStation, laptop, desktop, or even your Raspberry Pi output it to this display through HDMI which is just awesome. Here you can see I'm running Rocket League. It has a very little delay, which means it has a good and playable response time. And yes, it also accepts HDMI audio that can be played through the built-in 3.5mm jack. 
which the audio quality is pretty good and very loud, no complaints here whatsoever. So in conclusion, hardware wise the headset has what it takes, it's just that the software needs a bit of tweaking. For some, they may just want to play retro games, others may want to watch a movie on a long trip or play their console on the go. Any problem with software can be fixed with a simple update. It has plenty of awesome functions and features that it does very well and the fact that it is all in one headset, you don't have to worry about draining your phone battery. If the battery runs out, you can simply plug it in with a beefy power bank and keep on rolling. And remember, there will always be more info in the description. And that is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and thanks to Magic C for reaching out to me to review this wonderful headset. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of your content reviews. See you guys in the next video and take care everyone.